Tsad Choice as advertising in red invented by T Tsad Choice as advertising in red invented by T Tsad is no good starting off like a sprinter if you soon run out of juice. To win a World Cup you have to build up momentum, advertisement. The first game is not actually that important. In 1982 I had picked the ball to Brian Robson within 27 seconds of the start of the opener against France and we were on our way. We went out in the second round, my worst World Cup finish. By contrast, we lost the first game in 1986 and then drew the next game against Morocco. Then, in the days before the internet, the newspapers finally arrived from back home. We knew roughly what we were thinking but the barrage of criticism. Emlyn Hughes, I remember, had said he was embarrassed to be English. When you read newspapers that criticize you personally, professionally and everything else, that stimulates you more than anything else. Our World Cup hopes were hanging by a thread and we were in danger of being the laughing stock of the tournament, coming home before the postcards. We wanted to leave that to the Scots, so Bobby Robson showed us a flip chart with all the permutations and equations for us to avoid getting on that first plane home and it was so complicated. He simply wrote on the bottom of it, just win. We drove into the stadium with a live and kicking by simple minds playing on our boom box and we were 3-0 up against Poland by half time. For that, if it had not been for Diego Maradona, we would have won the cup. We had that momentum. The papers told Sabobi to bring us home after the opening draw against the Republic in 1990 but it was a good result because we knew Jack Charlton would have them fired up. And we drew with the Dutch and were pleased with that also. The downside was that Brian Robson's Achilles injury fled and I was suddenly the England captain. It was now my job to keep the spirits up. The Dutch, Italians and Germans enjoy the time away but the English players tend to see tournaments as prison camp and certainly in 1990 we had to do certain things at certain times. So I tried to mix it up. There was a blazer and tie dress code for dinner each evening so one night I decreed it was backwards day the players wore everything back to front and started their meal with dessert. Also, the rules said nothing about trousers, so four of us went down to dinner the night before the Egypt game wearing nothing on our bottom halves but our jog straps. Unbeknown to us, the international committee were in that night and the FA Big Wigs were met with the sight of Chris Waddle, Gaza, Gary Stevens and I only half-dressed. So Bert Millichip said, you do realize, Terry, your international career is over. Three weeks later, in fairness, it was, but not before why had become the closest any Englishman has come since Bobby Moore to getting his hands on the World Cup. We had kept our spirits up and were a shoot out the way from the final. England now don't have quite those same characters but there is a different mentality within the squad. Gareth has helped to foster more of a togetherness than we have had for many years. Look at the Scotland match when we went 2-1 to one down, there are still some players in the dressing room to dig England out of a hole. They're pretty tight as a group and even in the downtime they bond further over games of Fortnite. All we had to entertain us was cards, Monopoly and Peter Beardsley. On the basis they have a chance of going a long way in Russia, Ashley Young is. My pet hate and the one area Gareth Southgate seems to have a blind spot. He seems to think that because he is a forward thinking player with experience who has had a good season for Manchester United. Your wing backs have to be quick going forward and quick in recovery. Young is neither which makes him reluctant to go forward because he is worried about the amount of cover he is giving the centre backs. That one area down our left hand side could be our undoing. You saw that in the second half against Nigeria at Wembley. And at the World Cup just one weakness can put you out of the tournament. Without a doubt, it is vital Danny Rose is fit to play in the tournament, being in a country that is hosting the World Cup is special, this is my first since 2006. I enjoy the buzz and seeing all the fans in the fan zones. I am going to be based in Moscow with the BBC Radio 5 live team and will take the opportunity to have a look around. I'm lucky, because as soon as I put my specs on I'm like Clark Kent and become virtually invisible. England fans struggle to recognize me without a bandage round my head and blood on my 
shirt Terry's tips winners Brazil the 7 to 1 defeat to Germany in 2014 hurt them badly. They have got a squad now that is hungry and a manager who has breathed belief into the team. They will really fancy this. Finalists Germany it is very hard to discount them but nobody has won it back to back since Brazil in 58 and 62. Outsiders France people are saying Didier Deschamps is the wrong manager but he is World Cup winner. His squad underperformed at the Euros and still only lost in the final. They have the potential to go all the way. England, I think we will finish second to Belgium in the group and then I fancy Colombia to be our opponents as Group H winners. We can beat them, once you get to the quarterfinals anything can happen. It will then be Germany or Brazil but we have shown it. The past we can match them in a one-off game. It is about time we started to write our own history.